Now, you guys have a lot of pedigree. We're dealing with a bit of a legend here. Yeah, Razor Court, built back in 98 by my mm -hmm. good self and friend Simon Scott here. So, it must yeah. have been modified. You're not going to stand a chance against these guys if it's the old one. Well, he was always pretty good, though. That early principle was always pretty effective because the machines can never armour up that well on the top. Yeah. Now, what about the girls? Darcy, how did you get roped into this? Um, well, I just wanted to be here to support Dad because I've grown up with Razor since mm -hmm. I was little. I support the boys, really, by reminding them to eat and drink. Yeah. So, Mum yeah. springs to the rescue yeah. with... Food. Yeah. I brought along a nice box oh, of sausage rolls. Ah, uh, stock. Can I have one? Yeah, go for it. Are they're they homemade? Yes, they are. They're, they're lush. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's delicious. Yeah, you Tim's can finish mom. that one. I need to go on top of these guys, but look. <laughs> the four teams must now make the nerve wracking walk up to the arena, ready for battle. Hopeful that their hard work and planning will be enough to get them through the group stage. So, for the first time this series, let's hand over to legendary commentator Jonathan Pierce. Thanks very much, Dara and Angela. It is so good to be back. The team's nearly set, so just time to introduce our esteemed judging panel. Director of Robotics at Edinburgh University, Professor Sethu Vijaya Kumar. Doctor of Mechanical Engineering, Dr Lucy Rogers. And Robot Wars alumni and Professor of Artificial Intelligence and Robotics at Sheffield University, Professor Noel Sharkey. In the event of no clear winner, our judges decide on the victor, scoring them on damage, aggression and control. If a robot's deemed immobile for over 10 seconds, they'll be ruled out of the fight. So there's plenty to keep our judges busy. Remember, only two robots from the four can go through from this battle. The teams are in place. Let's get started. From Caithness, Scotland, King Crafty. Father and son Robin and Matthew are here with their friends Isaac and Nick. When Robin's not working on Kitty Cranky, he's working on nuclear power stations. No stranger to danger then. From Lady Lance. What a mixed bunch this lot are. Driver Rory is a cybernetic student alongside minibot driver Alex, while Dave works in a stockroom for a DIY store. Handy for spare parts, no doubt. Chris is an engineer, so he must be the sensible one. From Bournemouth. Reason. Mum Gillian, Dad Ian and daughter Darcy in this team alongside friend and fellow builder Simon. So two generations and a lot of expectation for this very, very famous robot. From Oxford, Terrahats. Such an experienced team. John Reed, who by day designs simulators for Formula One teams, but by night creates and drives this amazing robot. His weapon operator Nick is an amateur rocket scientist. The house robot for Group Battle 1 is Matilda, armed with a pneumatic front flipper and a hardened steel rear flywheel. Now, the house robots will only operate in their corner patrol zone, the CP said. They'll never seek out a fight, but should a competitor enter their zone, they can expect no mercy. Matilda, I have missed you. Everyone is in their places. Let battle commence. Roboteers, stand by. <laughs> Four teams in the control rooms. Only two places in the competition available. The big question here, who can beat the mighty Razor? Coming out bottom of the picture and taking on Killy Cranky immediately. Oh, out come the little cluster bots of nuts. We've got mayhem here because Terahertz is going after nuts. The little cluster bots will come out and try and wedge in underneath the opponents and flip them up and over. Terahertz with a mighty axe there and a very, very experienced driver in John Reed. And it's Razor crushing down on Killy Cranky with that deadly hydraulic piercer. Nine tons of pressure, three tons at the tip of the claw. You don't want to mess with Razor. There's the Matilda cam looking on from the CPZ. Oh, they've activated the pit. Down goes the pit. Now, someone could be on the edge of doom very shortly, and it was very nearly nuts. You can see the flailing chain, and there the self-writing mechanism. The protective ring acts as a three mech to keep it going, whichever way it topples, and it spins and attacks their terahertz. Razor after the little cluster bots, they look mini, don't they? Against the mighty terahertz. Very experienced team. No more experience, of course, than Razor in the whole competition. I would think Matilda's out and Prowling. That's a ghastly sight I see here in my nightmares every single night. Killy Cranky after a little. 
little, little bitty cluster box. Very experienced driver Ian Lewis of Razor just saw him there. And the mayhem continues at a little bit of a slower pace because they've measured the fight now. They know what they're doing, and Razor has got once again Killy Cranky in its grip. That's been his target all the way through. Nuts is spinning in a crazy fashion, but doing damage. And it looks to me as if Killy Cranky is in trouble. Razor has Killy Cranky. Oh no! Look at this! Oh! The mighty have fallen! They took Killy Cranky out and went themselves! Oh, what a close shave that was for Nuts! <laughs> what happened? It skid. He spun his wheels. And look at the boys from Nuts! They've got more tricks up their sleeve than Darren Brown, they say! And they're stunned, they're through! What a sensational start! Can hardly catch my breath. Let's have a look at it again. There's Terahertz immediately against Nuts. It was a personal battle, but Nuts rode that one and got away from the mighty axe as it crashed down. Razor has picked up one of the little cluster bots, virtually destroyed that. Here they go towards the pit with Prey Killy Cranky, and they overbalanced and went in. And Razor sensationally out. Oh, cue surprises there. Killy Cranky, can I come to you first? It hadn't been tested in battle. Yeah. That was his first run out. Yeah. You know, so you weren't. I, I presume you weren't expecting to win the whole thing with a with a brand new robot. How do you think it, it did? Was, fair? It was unlikely. I think I think it was very good actually. I mean, we the tactics were we opened the pit, and then Razor clearly had it in for us. So we yes. thought, well, let's go for a mutual death pact and take them down <laughs> with us. Did you do you have any control over that? Were you spinning your wheels and thinking you, you you may have drawn him in in any way? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he clasped onto us, and yes. then we drove all the way across the arena into the pit. <laughs> that wasn't clear from what we were watching there at all. You killed that's Razor. You killed <laughs> Razor. You took yourselves out of the game yeah. for the greater good. This is a big deal for a lot of people who were very scared of Razor, thought that Razor was the one thing that could defeat them. This may have changed the entire competition. And do you know who's particularly happy with you? These <laughs> people there. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody expected <laughs> who went in with really the kitchen sink of a robot. Yeah, yeah. What was it doing half the time? Oh, yeah. it's, it's a good question. <laughs> there seemed to be a sort of team up between Terahertz and Razor Leal, so they weren't fighting amongst them. So we seemed to got the Terahertz and Ladir, which we were all right with. We were all right with axes and yeah, had our mini bots. But, but then Razor them. went after one of your mini bots. And got destroyed yeah, yeah, yeah. at one stage. Well, they, they were sacrificial, so you know. Yeah, the, yeah. One, the one thing we armoured against was axes. And it was taken blow after blow from Terra. It's an absolutely fine. Yeah, it's well fantastic. done. You're in the head to heads. Congratulations, Yay! Yay! The two big daddies. I thought I'd be coming in here to the smell of victory, but Razor, what happened? I was all going really well, wasn't it? It was. It, it looked like it was going too well. Maybe it was you and Killy Cranky yeah. all the way locked heads. Oh, it was a good tussle, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. But yeah. then it just didn't quite work yeah. out. Oh, you are I mean. going home. You and your sausage yeah. rolls. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame, but yeah. we have. Winners! Ooh. Beautiful masterclass. Made it through. Happy? <laughs> yeah. No, he's miserable because it's so cold in here. We can't yeah. find the axe very much, or it just freezes up. Oh, really? So we're okay. Really limited. We have to be so careful. So about does the that axe. affect how that how you work strategically yeah, yeah, in there? Yeah, it affects our strategy very much. Yeah. Well done, Terahertz. You're through to the head to head. After each battle, the teams must return to the pits for repairs. And there's a warm welcome for Nuts, who not only return in one piece, but also with a place in the next round. Winning teams must work quickly, as they only have two hours to turn around their robots before the next battle. Brilliant. This is genuinely can't believe it. It's just amazing. Just, we have a lovely scarf and razor on the orange one here, right there, through the base plate, straight through the robot. At the moment, not seeing any uh, any obvious damage. There seems to be an issue that the ring has a gearbox in to make it spin. Um, this but it's got, is, is very slack. Yeah, it's got um, loose. So the rolling mechanism seems to have come loose somewhere. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look in and see but, if we can fix it. But the rest of it's looking good at the moment. For the likes of Razor, it's time to pack up and head home. Well, you've got to live life on the edge, haven't you? So <laughs> that was. <laughs> A bit too close to the edge. Sometimes you tip over it, but sometimes you don't, so it's kind of a, a good metaphor, really, for it. Right, sausage rolling in one. Just get the control.